It's one thing to clean house on a losing football coaching staff, but what's on people's minds is why the president resigned. We've been on the hunt for the answer. Take a look at what we found. I got fired, make no mistake. Coach Solomon Southall is one of 10 coaches whose termination papers News West 9 obtained through the Freedom of Information Act. They all say the same thing. Something along the lines of it being in the best interest of the football program and the university for the coaches to be fired. They were all signed by President Ricardo Maestas, who himself resigned later that same month. By the third or fourth game, we already knew that, you know, what was going to happen. We knew it was over. I didn't know they would fire the assistant coaches, but we knew that there was funny business going on and we knew that it was going to be a bad year. Former interim head coach John Tyree and others claim that a booster named Randy Jackson was interfering with the football program and offering players money and bribes and sometimes to foot athletes medical bills they couldn't afford. We call a team meeting and Tyree tells them and the president too. Guys, you cannot associate with this man. You cannot, it will be a violation we have to report it and stuff like that and they would lose a year of eligibility. Then there were all the claims of abuse at the hands of certain coaches. All these letters tell the stories from parents and alumni about the alleged abuse. This one even made it into the paper. But one was different. In this letter signed by former player Jarrell Mitchell, he claims Jackson had asked him to sign a document saying some coaches were abusing players and that it would provide him with the proof he needed to, quote, go after Tyree, South Hall, Littles, and Trammell and make sure they never coached a down of football. According to the letter, Mitchell refused and walked away. I don't know many kids that are walking around out in a town like this, broke, needing money, but it wouldn't take it to sell out these coaches. So he couldn't have made this up? No, he wouldn't. Why? <laughs> I mean, there's no reason for him to. Jackson claims he's never even met Mitchell and challenges the authenticity of the letter. In an email to News West 9, Jackson says that if Mitchell, quote, takes a lie detector and shows that he is telling the truth in this accusation, I will send him a cashier's check for $5,000. That was in October. By November, some parents decided they had had enough. Yes. Screaming at the boys, cussing at the boys, talking to them like they were less than human. I never saw a display of so much um, hate and blame, and it was it was pathetic. It was embarrassing. Michelle Yezik is one of the parents who came to the Board of Regents with concerns after she says Dr. Maestas wasn't investigating. He walked in a locker room, little boy, asked him. Are any of you boys being abused with the coaches in earshot? That's not an investigation. No boy is going to stand up and say, um, yeah, I'm being abused. Yezek travels 500 miles to go to every game at Sol Ross to watch her son, who's now a junior, play. And she also takes pictures of the team. So she says she's observed the coaches regularly, and not all of them should have been fired. But she's still satisfied that her concerns didn't fall on deaf ears. I felt it was a battle I had to fight for, for the whole team. They just didn't do their job. They didn't our, com our team was completely disconnected. We had boys testing at each other on the field. But these documents show Dr. Maestas did meet with the players individually. Then in an emailed response to Chancellor McCall, Dr. Maestas writes, some of the coaches have admitted in the meeting this morning that profanity is being used. However, I consider the use of profanity and verbal or physical abuse as two separate violations. It wasn't any worse than I've seen it in any other program I've been at. Yes, there's cussing not at the players, it's at situations. South Hall adds that they're also grown men. Still, Dr. Maestas did place Tyree on an official notice that the behavior would not be tolerated and could lead to his termination. I think we got along very well with most of the players. You know, some of them sent emails to the uh, president or to the chancellor and said, you fired the wrong coaches. Of course, they were all fired, but... But what's concerning the coaches now is what happened to Dr. Maestas. You know, he just disappears. And uh, people want to know why. This is a tax-supported institution. It's not, you know, this isn't the mafia. Tyree and Dr. Maestas are friends, so he finds it strange to not have heard from him. He gave me his private cell phone number and said, don't call me on the school phone anymore. No answer. 
And that's not just me. That's people all over town that have tried that. News West 9 tried calling and leaving several voice and text messages with no response. It is unclear if he's still in Alpine, but we're told he has vacated the president's house there. We have Dr. Maestas' letter of resignation in which he writes that he was leaving after having brought the university's success in enrollment, graduation rates, and fundraising. He goes on to pledge his support to the university, but there is no reason given for leaving. Then he was appointed a new position created just for him as an advisor to the chancellor, a move some believe was to buy off his silence. A presidential advisory search committee has been put together to help replace Dr. Maestas. The 18-member spans multiple cities and locally includes the Alpine Independent School District Superintendent and the Sol Ross State Alumni Association, for which Jackson is a board member. Many parents and coaches believe Jackson cares for the kids and is just trying to improve the program. The committee is currently reviewing applications for the president position. They expect to have a new one by December. And if you missed part one of my story, you can find it on our website at newswest9.com. In the studio, Anam Valiani, News West 9.